If you're applying to entry-level developer roles but are hardly getting any responses on your applications, then I wanna share with you why an internship and even a part-time internship could be exactly what you need to get a lot more traction with your job hunting efforts. Welcome to the channel, my name is Dave. I'm an iOS developer and I make videos about breaking into the field of software development. In this video, I'm gonna share why an internship was a really helpful boost in getting responses to my job applications and then give you a few things to consider to see if it's the right direction for you. Do I think that an internship is 100% essential to land a job? No, there are tons of success stories of people who never had one, but what this channel is all about is helping regular people maximize their likelihood of getting hired. And I'm a big believer that you can achieve your goals faster if you're strategic with your approach. And then before jumping in, this video is really geared towards people who are out of college, who don't have a degree or a background in computer science and who live in the United States. That was me and so that's the audience that I'm able to speak to right now. But from what I do understand, if you're in college or if you live in another country, then the approach might be a lot different. And so if you're applying to your first developer role right now, you already know that the number one thing being counted against you is your lack of experience. If you're going up against somebody that has a year of work experience, that person is probably gonna win against you 95% of the time. So the battle that you're fighting is essentially how can you best give an employer the perception of experience without having ever had a job? That's pretty much what it all comes down to. And so you can really think of it as a game of how can I do that better than the other candidates that I'm going up against. The top two ways in my opinion are having a really strong portfolio of personal projects. And you can check out my last video for ways to come up with ideas for that. And number two would be an internship. What you have to understand is that employers ultimately just want to minimize risk as much as possible when making a hire. But what an internship may convey to them is that you have done actual work on an actual product with an actual team for an actual company, actually. But seriously, whether or not you gain skills that are transferable to a real job is kind of secondary to you. The point is to be able to present a stronger package of who you are as a candidate. And so if there are two applications with all other factors equal, but one of them has an internship or is currently doing an internship, then that candidate is gonna win every single time. Hopefully you're not hearing that once you do an internship, all of your applications will immediately translate into an interview. But when I added mine to my resume, I went from getting almost no responses from the first three months of applying to starting to get at least some responses. And that was a noticeably large improvement for me that helped me just start to get some at-bats. Now, in terms of the how, this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. During the whole time that I spent applying to developer roles, which is about six months, I really only came across two different categories of internships for iOS developers. The first is mega tech companies. So think of things like Fang companies or any other giants up there like Lyft or Shopify. And while some of these internships are exclusive to students, even if they're not, they're ultra competitive. All of these will likely have over a thousand applicants just for a small handful of spots. And I'm just a regular guy, I didn't, go to an Ivy League school, I haven't cured any diseases. So I always did take the time to throw my name into the mix. I was just never super hopeful or confident in my chances to get one of those spots. And then down from the tech giants, you have the land of your average companies that have a mobile app. And here there are essentially no internships available for non-students. I don't know the exact reason why that is, but it may have something to do with just your normal company not loving the idea of a 28 year old intern whereas large techie companies are more inclusive of unconventional paths into tech, but who knows. And so that leaves us with the young, small, cash-strapped startup-like companies. And the great thing here is that there's a decent amount of options available with very little competition. The not great thing is that in most cases, they're gonna be unpaid. Now I've referenced this in the past, but my approach here was that despite not getting paid, I could use this as a temporary step to help boost my resume and boost my legitimacy in order to help me get a job. Of course, my preference would have been that it would be paid, but ultimately I think the couple months that I did 20 to 25 hours of work a week ended up being a great deal both for me and for the company that I was doing the work for. And if it's unpaid, it definitely puts you in the position where you can tell them exactly how many hours you're able to work in a given week and since they're getting free work, they can't really force certain hours on you. And they also expect that you will continue to job search while you're working there and that you'll likely leave whenever something lands. Now, I do understand that everyone's situation is different and that some of you might not be able to work 20 hours a week in an internship without getting paid. But one thing to consider is maybe just taking the total of all the hours you're currently 
working towards applying to jobs, learning new skills, working on projects, take that total and then put half of those hours towards an internship. And that way you can still get the resume boost and the perceived legitimacy points, but you still have time to keep applying and working on those other things. The other thing is that on your resume, you don't have to explicitly list that it's a part-time internship. Of course, if an employer asks, you would wanna tell them, but at that point you're already in the door and so you can win them over with other aspects about yourself. Finally, AngelList is where I found the most openings for iOS developer internships. And this is a site where, again, a lot of the companies are gonna be smaller, younger, potentially have a lot less structure than larger companies. But the competition for these positions is gonna be very, very small. I maybe came across a few on LinkedIn and Indeed, so it's definitely worth checking those out. But in my experience, it was pretty rare. So to wrap this up, employers want experience. If you don't have that, then an internship might be a really effective way to boost your overall package. It certainly was for me, and the number one thing that I would do differently if I could go back would be to start an internship immediately after finishing my boot camp. But it all worked out in the end, so I do feel fortunate just to be able to share this with you guys. Thanks for listening. Let me know in the comments if you've done an internship, if you agree, if you disagree. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts. If you got any value from this information, hit the like button to support the channel. Subscribe if you want to see upcoming videos, and I'll see you in the next one.